Santa time of year again, and I um, have received a box that scares me quite a bit. Not because I don't like receiving boxes or presents. I actually quite like receiving gifts. However, um, getting a box in the mail from Colin Furs is a little bit scary. You know, because like he's the man responsible for... I don't think I need to finish that sentence. <laughs> While I procrastinate opening this box, I'm gonna show you what I made for Jimmy, which is probably a little bit more calming than whatever's in this box. <laughs> Secret Santa, and I got Jimmy DeResta. Getting a gift for Jimmy is like trying to figure out what to get your dad for Christmas. It's impossible. And also, Jimmy DeResta is like the godfather of making on YouTube, right? As a result, every maker YouTuber under the sun has like already made him a gift. And so I have to come up with something that no one else has already made him and that he hasn't made himself in the like 12 years or something that he's been making stuff on YouTube and he posts a video like every week. Secret Santa sounded easier before I found out who I had. Every time I think I'm doing something unique and new, you know what happened? Jamie's already done it. You thought the Cedar Ship canoe was cool? Boom. You thought the fact that I made paddles for it was cool? Well, you guys liked the teardrop trailer quite a bit. Um, however, I, I built a really cool bass guitar. Maybe, maybe that's different and Jimmy hasn't done it. Stained glass window. I didn't even do that on my own channel. I did that on Total Boat's channel. <sighs> okay. Where I've landed is I think I am just the Chinese knockoff of Jimmy DeResta. And you know what? Maybe I'll lean into that. What would the Chinese knockoff of Jimmy DeResta make for Jimmy DeResta? You'd think this would be easier. I spent like a week shooting a show with him. I've been to his house a lot of times. All right, Jimmy, ice picks, everything ice picks. His chickens. Uh, we spent three or four days on set together and he broke like eight pairs of glasses. Needs more reading glasses. He makes a lot of knives. I could make him like a Chinese knife. Yeah. Spray paints his name on everything. It's workable. I think. Okay, so here's my master plan. Basically, Jimmy DeResta spray paints DeResta onto everything under the sun. Anything that enters his property probably leaves saying DeResta on it. I think that when I went and visited him, I left with DeResta spray painted down my arm. That's a lie, but it's a believable lie. <laughs> but here's the thing. The Chinese have been doing that for thousands of years and it's called a chop. And it's basically a seal, like a stamp seal that has your name carved into it. Traditionally, it would be carved out of jade or something like that. And you can, it'll either be the negative or the positive. It doesn't matter. It's always using a traditional red ink, no matter like what color the characters are in or the text is in, you're going to stamp it in this like very traditional red ink. It's very different from Western culture is that the artist will of course put their chop seal on the piece of art when they finish it, but then the purchaser will also add their seal. Every consequential purchaser will also add their seal and over hundreds of sometimes even thousands of years a piece of art could accrue like a couple dozen of these seals in most cases will actually make the art more valuable because it has this history of like you see all of the places that it's been and the people who have owned it what's cool about this one is it actually looks like three different people have signed this i'll have to ask my mom about this one it's a very cool thing and i figure i can't really make jimmy something he can't make himself but I can give him a little slice of who I am and where I come from. So let's Chineseify Jimmy DeResta. Side note, I think this is the most awkward shot I've ever done on YouTube. I never expected to be needing my bed as a background. But here's the problem. You can't just go willy nilly translating names from English into Chinese because the languages work completely differently. So you could like type DeResta in something like Google Translate and you're just gonna get four random words that might sound phonetically like DeResta but mean absolutely nothing. So for example, this means open thunder tower pagoda. Names need to be poetic and I'm not good enough to do that. So it's time to call Mama Foxlin. Hey Mama. Hey. Baby, baby. I have a friend who has a name in the name of the 
So his name is Duresta. And I'm stuck. But we sent you to a Chinese school, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> mom, I'm recording. This is my mom. <laughs> She's already yelling at me for not paying attention in Chinese school. Okay, I got as far as D, which is Earth, and Ru, which is Sun. What's a word? It's, you know, related to D. Earth. Yeah. That's good. D Resta, you can say D Li. Everything is is advantageous. You know, the, either the location or the surrounding, the environment. So Si Da could be everything in, is in good place for him to reach his goal. To use with seal, there's certain fonts. We call it fonts, but it's really a certain style of, of calligraphy. Luckily, you can find them online. <laughs> <laughs> the ancient Chinese technique of Googling it. Wow, thank you, Mama. Bye. So I listened to my mom like any good Chinese daughter and bopped over to the Chinese equivalent of defont.com and used Illustrator to take those and design a quick stamp. Once that file was done, I brought it over to the laser cutter and etched not only the negative, but also the reflective inverse so that it can be used properly as a stamp and not be backwards or flipped. <laughs> Okay, since I don't have the skills to um, carve a dragon or a tiger or something, like a very Chinese motif in the top of the chop, and I'm breaking from tradition anyway by making it out of wood instead of jade or stone of some kind, I thought it would be kind of fun. I have this chunk of Osage orange that's got like a really fun live edge on it, and I was thinking of leaving it as a live edge top because there's like something poetically Jimmy and cat skillsy about a more rustic look. So even though the characters are very traditional, I think the top will be a little bit more Jimmy. The first step here was to rough cut it into a square, which I did on a combination of my chop saw and my table saw. Now I've got all these wormholes to clean out and it wouldn't be a Duresta project. Also, Jimmy, I got a bone to pick with you. The number of times I have hurt myself with an ice pick is higher than any other tool in my shop, for the record. Jimmy! Jimmy, I got blood on your chop. Be right back. <laughs> now our little critter friends had an absolute feast on this piece of wood. So to stabilize it, I actually had to mask off three of the sides because the little holes ran all the way through in all directions. So I did that and then I mixed up some Bottle Tote resin and poured it right in there. And I dyed it red because red is the Chinese lucky color. I then heat gunned it quite a bit to make it less viscous to, in hopes it would run deeper into a lot of those holes, but that is kind of risky because it increases your chance of an exothermic reaction, so proceed with caution. But then I grabbed some four minute epoxy and stuck the bottom on. Okay, so I really need a way of presenting it or like a box or, or something. I don't feel like anything, like this isn't traditional enough to make a traditional box and there isn't really like a set way to do it. So I have all of these scraps from when I made that map of the United States out of wood from every state. You guys sent me like so much more wood than I can use. I'm kind of just poking through looking for inspiration of some kind. I found these. I have no idea what the surface finish will look like. Should we find out? So I grabbed some calipers, measured my piece of wood, and then headed over to my brandy new CNC machine. So I'm super excited. I'm working with Tormach now, and they sent me this incredible machine. It'll be in a bunch of videos next year, I'm sure. Um, but this project was a little bit of a way to like get to know it and figure it out. So it's all simple, but I'm getting there, I'm getting there. So with the quarter inch end mill, I just cut the slots for the chop to sit in and for the ink to sit in. And now I finally get to see the surface finish of this thing, which was very pleasant. And then I just chopped the ends so it was cut down to size, flattened the bottom, and gave it a final sanding. And then it was ready for a coat of polyurethane. Back over to the chop, I flipped it over and poured epoxy in the other side to fill the rest of the wormholes. And while I was at it, I decided to pour epoxy into the chop well in the holder just to tie the two together color-wise and give the holder like a really nice pop of red. Once it was cured, I peeled the tape off and started final shaping. I started on the oscillating belt sander by knocking off all the extra epoxy and then kind of like 
whittling it down to the loose shape I wanted, which is tapered and rounded more at the top by the live edge and then much more square down where the stamp is. Um, and then once I had it loosely where I wanted it to be, I took it to the orbital sander to finish it off. This of course revealed some small gaps in the epoxy, which I filled in with CA glue and then sped it up with an activator. And for the bigger ones, you can do CA glue activators, more CA glue, then some more activator, etc. And that cures instantly and it can be final sanded and then finished. And I just sprayed it with some polyurethane. And then traditionally this is, the box is lined with a red silk, but since it's wood, I kind of don't want to do that. So I'm wondering if there's a way It's a little more traditional for whatever that's worth. <laughs> All right, here's my stamp set. So the question is, do I test it before I send it? But if I do that, then the first stamp won't be done by Jimmy himself. Um, and it will be dyed red, like the wood will be dyed red. So I think you have to go over to Jimmy's channel to see if it works. So yeah, it's time to ship it. But wait, you can't send Jimmy something that is small. Like that stamp is very clearly not duresticized. So I decided to go ahead and make him a duresticized version. Is this an excuse to play with my new CNC machine? Yes. And was it worth it? Also yes. So I started by just cutting down a piece of leftover cherry plywood from my teardrop trailer. So this is the exact same plywood on the outside of my trailer which is funny because he's also built a trailer. Um, and then I brought it over to the Tormach and made a really big version. And before y'all criticize, yes, I left the dust shoe up for the camera because I'm a YouTube hoe. And also, um, I haven't set up my dust collector yet. This is literally the first project I have done with this machine. I'll get there, eventually. It's working! I would also like to point out that while my Tormach runs just fine, it's the vacuum cleaner that blows the breaker. And then once my robot had done most of the work, which by the way, I would like to say, setting up the files and learning CAD and all that stuff takes a fair amount of skill and time and effort. Just to clear the CNC name. But anyway, once the robot had done all the work, I just sanded off the tabs, leveled it out, and broke out my handy dandy trusty bottle tote resin to do the pour. For this to simulate that traditional ink, I wanted the opacity and the richness of a like very true red, so I used a mix-all pigment for that. And then once that was mixed in, I decided I also wanted a little bit of fun sparkle, so I added some mica pigments in as well. And then we pour. Although, I don't think epoxy pours are as trendy anymore as they used to be, so do we just fast forward through this part? And then with a quick sanding and a wipe down, it was ready for finish. Merry Christmas, Jimmy. Or rather I should say, Merry Christmas, Dili Sada. Thank you for being one of my first mentors on YouTube, and I really hope you've enjoyed this little slice of my culture. So, happy Maker Secret Santa, and I can't wait for you to finally knock off one of my videos. It's about time. And now all I have to do is remember to put the hanger on, pack it up, and send it on its merry way to upstate New York. With some festivity, of course.
And with my happy little packages in the mail, it was time to face whatever the heck Colin sent me. <laughs> I have a prom picture. Like, I think this is like one of my only pictures from junior prom is I'm like, how's the resemblance? <laughs> Here goes. Colin, please don't burn my shop down. I just moved here and I quite like it. Oh boy. There is a note. Hello Zyla, your secret Santa is I, Colin Furs. However, this is not your secret Santa present, but merely a tribute. For an explanation of the Xylor, contact me. Merry Christmas, Colin. I am so fascinated. However, this does mean that whatever this is, is not going to uh, destroy my shop, so that's nice. I am drowning in curiosity. <laughs> I think it's time to call Colin. Oh, I got a weed transfer from Colin. Let's see. A small message to explain the terrible gift, except explain has a, co a colon in the middle of it. Down left. 55 seconds left. Join my Patreon to help me afford faster internet, because right now I have the bare minimum. That's why I don't stream. Five seconds. Here we go. Hello, Zyla. So, I, Colin Furs, am your secret son. And of course, if you're watching this, then you are going to be in possession of this. Now I am. The Xylor Foxlin. Oh yeah, nice little pun I did there. Yeah, that was my idea. Now, this is not actually your secret Santa gift. This is merely a tribute. Your actual secret Santa gift was the Furs Power Paddle. However, every time you switch this on, it was either plotting to maim itself or the person holding it. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided not to send you this because I thought, you know, as a former Miss America testant, I do not want to be slashing your face up. So this little thing is a gift and a tribute towards that build and a dedication to it. And I've dedicated the power paddle to yourselves as your secret Santa. So have a lovely Christmas. Enjoy the paddle, and to be fair, you could probably keep this somewhere because the other thing is ooking massive and you ain't gonna want that in your ass. Boo! See you soon. I might do, I don't know. Who knows if I'm ever in Los Angeles, I'll come round. Yeah, you could use this as a bat, couldn't you? <laughs> anyway, Christmas. La! I knew it would be destructive. I called it. <laughs> like a week ago, Ruth was asking me what cordless angle grinder I had. He was actually gonna send this to me. Well, Colin, I'm gonna be in the UK for Maker Central in May, and I would love to take your power paddle out for a ride. My face be damned. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. Please uh, subscribe and stuff. I don't know. Uh, thanks, bye.